Hi all, welcome to a super quick episode. I am going to talk about this hot topic among 3D artists these days and add my two cents to it. But I am not going into too much technical details because others did it so well already. So let's just chat a bit about hand painting normal maps while I guide you through some projects of mine based on that very same technique and we can talk about a few do's and don'ts along the way and keep an eye on description for some related links which you may find useful. So here I am with a fantastically modeled and UV mapped 3D character by Nick Scott. You can find it in Sketchfab. I downloaded the FBX format and imported it into Blender. This is how it may look like. But for normal map hand painting, I prefer to start from flat shading. You might know this if you have seen my breakdown in Twitter before. This is how the model looks like in flat shading. Not what I expected, I must admit but I managed to fix it by using a bevel modifier. You can actually skip this part, it is mostly about personal preferences, but I do like to see the color of each faces separately based on their normal orientation. Right now we have too many separate elements. To bake our textures conveniently, I am going to merge similar materials. For instance, all the metals are merged, same goes for clothes, leathers and so on. At the same time, I am setting up those materials and a basic 3 point lighting system. So I ended up with 5 objects after merging the meshes. Everything should be properly UV mapped for hand painting. Luckily the model was already UV mapped with superior excellence. So all I had to do was repacking the joint meshes. A few islands were overlapped because of my beveling, most probably. I selected them separately and smart unwrapped them before repacking all the UV islands. Now let's get into baking the normals, which can be a little bit of pain sometimes, so we may need to talk about some common issues. By the way, here is a node setup that lets you to visualize object space normal. You can even bake normals with a mid setting with this node setup. You can try this if you ever face some issues with the regular baking of normals. But I am going to use the direct normal map baking option because this node doesn't actually work well with exported models from different ecosystems. Now I will add textures into shader editor to bake the normal maps and make sure to select non-color as soon as you add a texture or you may totally forget this later. Now we are ready for baking. Select object space from baking setting. Now normalize all the materials one by one. Also make sure to save the textures. To hard drive so we got a totally normal night now and here is a major issue you may face sometimes we really need to fix this one thing I recommend is not to bake a thin mesh for normal maps at least use a solidify modifier when two sides of a mesh is visible to your camera animation otherwise you will end up with wrong normal colors in one side of the faces so before baking Make sure that the model is giving a complete blue sign. But in this case, I can get away without a solidify modifier. I can just flip those inner faces and now I bake again. I had to do this because the faces would completely ignore the lighting because of wrong direction of normals. This is how a totally normal night should look like. Now we can get into painting. You can export your textures to a third party software like Krita. But I prefer to do everything inside Blender and look how we can manipulate the lighting with our brush strokes. And if you are bored with the default round brush, you can get my free brush sets from Gumroot. I mostly used the marker brush which is included in this pack. Some of you might have bought the illustrative brush set. So have fun with the two if you have it. I paint in the viewport shading sometimes to decide which color to use from a certain angle. Sometimes I would just paint in the non-rendered view. In fact, I do prefer to paint in the viewport shading mode more. And so our main step is painting a lot. I am also painting from different angles and checking the lighting from time to time. The colors can subtly intrude into neighboring areas. It will help to push the brush strokes fill in 3D. And here is how a normally treated night may look like. This is what it becomes after we apply the normal maps with object space setting without any base colors. But the fun doesn't end here, you can push things further. You can also hand paint a base color texture. If we plug in the base color texture into our character, we start to get some really gritty look which we usually see in warrior artworks. So this is the flat base color. 
I admit the armor is a bit too bright compared to the cloth material but I like it nevertheless. And do you notice those fabric like textures in cloth? It would have been a real pain to hand paint them so I just duplicated the cloth base and applied some stretched textures into alpha transparency and for cherry on top I ended up appreciating how it looked with a grease pencil liner modifier. Here is the liner setting with a few modifiers to make it more organic. In my render setting I had ambient occlusion, bloom and SSR enabled. Also I recommend playing with the HDRI setting for reflective materials. To give it a more hand drawn feel I tested with low FPS render and skipped frames at interval but regular renders are totally fine. I settled for 24 FPS at the end myself because sometimes low FPS looks a bit jarring. This camera animation was inspired by the artwork of Sin Sebastre. My camera work sucks. So that was how I text chart this night. But there are more fun things you can try with this technique. For instance, you can hand paint crevices. It might be a little tricky. You need to test lighting to see if the crevices are working. I hand painted the crevices of the leathers this way, also the scratches of the armor. To simplify this process, you can sample color from a crevice reference. I call this default cube crevice reference. Also, another super fun thing you can try is creating beautiful reflective materials like this one. Environment textures are the key to get such colorful reflections. The texture can be anything, your favorite painting, some random colors which you want to get reflected in your shiny materials. And do you want some brush mark like geometry around your totally normal 3D painting? Or some subtle edge words like this bunch of NPR Sujane? You can use Quick Explode. You may need to increase polygon if you are getting particle of very big sizes. Apply the exploded geometry and maybe sculpt it a little to hide some of the jagged edges. I did this for my still life scene too. So that was all for today. It was fun talking about this cool technique after a really long break. I hope you enjoyed the works and can't wait to see what you make with this technique. Until next time.